Hi YouTube, Alan again. Uh, I'm here for my first build video of my Prusa i3 from Sun Hokey. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, go check out my uh, unboxing video where I describe, you know, why I bought this printer and um, where I bought it from and that sort of thing. I'm happy to report that all of the acrylic parts looked uncracked and unblemished, so they look great. Everything seems to be here. I didn't count all of the nuts and bolts, but there's packages that say M3 and M4 on them, so I'm assuming they're all there. If you want to skip ahead, uh, there's two links here for part one and part two, or step one and step two. I kind of use those interchangeably. In this build video, we're building the x-axis uh, drive side and idler side. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, lots of screws, lots of nuts, a couple of mistakes, lots of fun. If you have any questions or suggestions about the build, leave them in the comments below. So this is step one of assembling the Sun Hokey Prusa i3. Uh, so for step one, we have six acrylic parts, one stepper motor, one T8 lead screw, one long uh, slider box, or box slider, one T2.5 pulley, one end stop, four M4 by 12 screws, uh, uh, four, five M3 by 16 screws, one M3 by 25 screw, four M3 by 12 screws, four M3 by 10 screws, uh, 11 M3 nuts, one flange nut, and one black spring. So, let's get started. plastic off of our parts and we're going to fit them together just to see how they all set up. You have to be very careful with which way these things go together um, because they are very confusing and very symmetrical looking. So this is how it's going to end up. So I'm just going to take this apart and put the different pieces on. So we're going to start with the T8 uh, lead screw nut. And put it on the top here. And that goes on with the four M3 by 12 nuts. It is really easy to over torque and crack the acrylic, so be careful with doing that, and I'm sure I will do this in one of the videos. Um, so remember future Alan, don't over torque the nuts and bolts. So I'm just going to put this on before I get this all assembled. I did look at all of the instructions beforehand know where everything goes and so to put on the motor you need the M3 by 10 millimeter screws and just go in here like so it helps if I put the motor the right way down so the cords are pointing downwards So that's the motor on, and then so we'll put the block slider on next. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tighten this down too much right now, so I'm gonna have to line this up later. But it's just easier to assemble it while it's separate little pieces here than try to try to put it on while it's all all the acrylics assembled. So if you see right here on the um, on the acrylic, there's a T-shape or cross shape, and in each of these spots, little nuts go, and then the screws go into those. So we'll just start fitting these together. Put a nut in there, and then a M3 by 16. Five of these. This is where you want to 
to be really careful of the, the amount of torque that you put on because this is where the acrylic will crack in these little T junctions. So these pieces go in here. Better if you assemble these, put these on first before putting on the bottom, and that way they just fly down and then this slides on the side. But if you like to be difficult like me, it's more fun to do it the other way. And so the last side piece goes on, on this side. I know the 2014 model used uh, screws that tightened into the into the linear rails to uh, secure the linear rails. Whereas the 2015 model ends up putting plates behind them so the stop the linear rails from moving laterally. So that's a, a design improvement from the 2013, or sorry, 14 to 2015 models. Uh, one of the, the several that they've put into this iteration. So the next step is to put on the drive pulley here. So loosen off the set screws. So there's a flat side and a non uh, on on the uh, on the stepper motor. So you want to put one of the set screws towards the flat side, and that will stop it from slipping. Uh, even if the set screw gets a little bit loose, it just provides a little bit more uh, traction for the set screw to, to on on the uh, on the drive shaft there. So. I'm just going to use this to for a little bit of spacer, make sure it lines up there pretty good. It does, so I'm going to just tighten these down. You want to tighten these down pretty tight. The next step is the end stop. And I know these are another big improvement over the 2014 model. Uh, the 2014 model, the end stops were tenuously attached to the um, to the linear rails, uh, whereas the 2015 model, they are much more securely attached to the, the, the acrylic itself. So it appears that I have assembled this middle piece upside down, because uh, there is a little part right here for some prongs in the back of the, um, some terminals in the back of the end stop to fit in. And I put mine upside down, so it's facing the wrong way. So I'll have to take it apart, and then I'll get back to this point, and I will um, start again, I guess. So that's what it looks like so far, and I'll be back with you in a minute. And we're back. So, um, it's back to where, we, where I left off, uh, just that this, central piece here where the, the uh, slider block um, and the stepper motor attached to uh, was upside down. So this little hole was down here, uh, but it needed to be on the top. So I had to take everything apart again, uh, take this off, take the stepper motor off, take all the acrylic apart, uh, and then to flip it around and then put it all back together again. Sorry for that little delay, but you know, part one, part one mistake. Let's see if we can get one for each one. So I'm just going to attach the end stop here, and the end stop is used to stop the, uh, this is the x-axis end stop, and it'll stop the x-axis from crashing into the side here um, and, and damaging parts. Uh, it also provides a home position, so uh, we'll, these are all adjustable end, end stops uh, this time around, uh, unlike the 2014 model. So uh, the adjustable end stops will allow you to adjust the homing position of the, of the uh, printer. Uh, easily and securely. So this is just attached by two M3 
by uh, 12, or sorry, M3 by 10 millimeter screws and uh, two M3 nuts. Uh, so what we have here is the, um, the x-axis motor and the y idler. No, sorry. The x-axis motor and the, the z idler, that's what we have here. Uh, so what this does is it runs the cable that moves the carriage back and forth with the printer head on it, on the x-axis, and this goes up and down the z-axis. So a linear rod goes through the slider block here, and the lead screw runs through this part here. Uh, so as you can see, there's the, the hole here uh, for the for the, uh, the cabling, uh, and then we have the end stop here, as mentioned before. So the last part of this assembly, part one, is to assemble the um, the adjustable Z, Z end stop. And so for this, we need one uh, M3 by 25 millimeter screw, one black spring, and one flange nut. So it just goes black screw, black spring goes on the screw, screw goes through the hole, flange nut goes on the end. And so what this will do, this will hit the Z end stop uh, just like here. So just like here, only go in this direction. So that completes part one. Uh, so I'll we'll start with part two. So welcome to part two of the uh, Prusa, Sun Hokey Prusa i3 build. Uh, what we have here uh, for step two is nine acrylic parts, uh, one T8 lead screw nut, one uh, long box slider, one black screw, one flange nut, one M3 by 30 millimeter screw, one M5 by, uh, what do we got here? M5 by 25 millimeter screw, uh, two, uh, what do they call them? Two single rollers, two M5 washers, one M5 nut. Uh, we've got 12 M3 washers, 10 M3 nuts, four M4 by 12 millimeter screws, four M3 by 12 millimeter screws, sorry, two M3 by 25 millimeter screws, and four M3 by 16 millimeter screws. So I'm gonna peel off the plastic once again. So the first step of this well, the first part of this step is to build uh, the tensioner uh, for the uh, x-axis idle. So what we need here are three acrylic parts, one M3 by 30 millimeter screw, which you push in here. And it's a tight fit uh, so it doesn't slip out. Uh, and then you need the M5 by 25 millimeter screw and the two M3 by 25 millimeter screws. So these bearings act as the, uh, the x-axis idle, so they allow the cable to run over top, or the belt, sorry, to run over top and, uh, and rotate freely. And then, so we put the two of those on, and then, sorry, get my hand out of the way, and then another M5 washer. On the, uh, L, or sorry, the M3 uh, screws, we put on three, pick it up, three washers, each to get the correct spacing. And then the acrylic part with the embedded uh, M3 by 30 millimeter and then three more on each side. This part allows us to adjust the tension on x-axis belt. And this is a, an improvement over the 2014 model which did not have all of these parts or uh, this adjustment. So they still spin pretty quick pretty freely here but it's pretty it's all secure. This part gets mounted on here, and we put the black screw, uh, the black spring, onto the M3 M3 by 30 millimeter screw, and then that goes through the hole. Try to 
do this without getting my hands in the way. And it goes through like that. And then the flange nut goes on the side. If I'm talking too fast, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to slow down for next time. Um, I'm just naturally trying to cram in as much information in any one second at any time. You can ask anybody I know and they'll tell you I never shut up. And so we'll just dry fit all these parts together to make sure we have everything in the right orientation so we don't repeat the same mistake I did last time. So this is how it all fits together in the end. Uh, so I'll just start with the T8 lead screw nut, as it's easier, I find it easiest to put on before everything else is assembled. So that's nice and snug now. So we'll put this back on top here. use the four M3 by 16 millimeter and four M3 nuts to, uh, to mount this all together. This step is the long box slider. So this is going to mount, mount it the same way as we did in part one. And there we have it. That's step two complete. So this is the x axis idler and uh, left hand long box slider and T8 lead screw nut. So once again the belt the cable or sorry the belt will come through here through the idler and back out through to the carriage on this side um, and then we have the adjustment ability here. And this pairs up to the right hand side. So we're coming along pretty good for you know the first night unboxing and then uh, first two steps. Well I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, with part three.